Well, we did it. Route 66 from Chicago to LA. 28 days, four adults, one dog, one cat, all in a Winnebago. This video documents our trip in the fall of 2021, and it shares some info and history that I hope you'll find entertaining and helpful, too, if, if you're planning a Route 66 trip yourself. Oh, and if you are planning a Route 66 trip, check out the link in the description to visiting66.com. I got a ton of free info on there to help you out, including a Google map with all the places that are in this video and like literally hundreds more things to do and see on Route 66. I think it'll be really handy for you. But this video is all about Route 66 in Oklahoma, so let's get to it. Oklahoma actually has the most drivable miles of Route 66 compared to any other state, along with some of the most iconic stops and roadside attractions. Heading into the town of Commerce, you'll find the Dairy... Oh, no, it's not Dairy Queen. It's the Dairy King. That's right. And they got some oh-so-delicious Route 66 homemade-shaped cookies that you gotta try. And right across the street from that, we got a gas station built into a brick wall. Hence the name, the Conoco Hole in the Wall gas station built in 1929. You can also see the childhood home of Mickey Mantle. That's right, the Mick himself grew up right here in Commerce. You could even peek inside of his old home. And check this out, you can actually see a bunch of dents on the side of this barn where Mickey spent a bunch of time practicing his hitting. And they even have a nine foot tall statue of Mickey Mantle at the Mickey Mantle Field at the local high school. So this one might look lame on video, but hear me out, it's actually pretty cool. This is one of the oldest, still drivable roadbeds on Route 66 from 1922. Even older than Route 66. But this guy's only nine feet wide, just one lane wide. And that's because money was tight, they only had enough to do half the job. And rather than cover half the distance, they decided to just make it half the normal width. So we didn't go on this in the motorhome, but that means you can drive it today, but it's still pretty hairy. And I gotta say, there's something a little magical about being able to walk on this road that's 100 years old. Now there's a lot of bridges on Route 66, but this Pryor Creek Bridge from 1926 is particularly cool. It's a through truss bridge and the beams cover the top, so it kind of looks like a tunnel. Look, it's another pedestrian tunnel. There was one of these in Illinois, but I love these. I just find it so funny that Route 66 was so busy, decades ago even, that they had to build tunnels underneath for pedestrian traffic. And this one actually has murals inside, but unfortunately it was closed for refurbishment when we were there. But we didn't totally miss out on the murals because just right across the street, they have this old U-Haul painted by Bob Waldmeyer just hanging out here. Next we have what is truly a landmark roadside attraction, Totem Pole Park. Built from 1937 to 1961 as a tribute to the American Indian, the main attraction is the 90 foot tall totem, with 200 carved images and a turtle at its base. In this thing we're talking 28 tons of cement, 6 tons of steel, and 100 tons of sand and rock. And it was just newly repainted so it's looking pretty good. Now there's not a ton to see here, but I want to tell you the story of the transcontinental foot race, aka the Bunyan Derby. It was a race from LA to New York in 1928 and used Route 66 for much of the route. But it was Mr. Andy Payne who won in 573 hours. Andy was from the town of Foyle, so that's why you'll see this monument commemorating him today. All right, pals, it's the famous Blue Whale of Catoosa. And boy, what a spectacle this thing is. Built in 1972 by a zoologist as an anniversary gift for his wife who collected whale figurines. And back in the heyday, you could actually enter inside the whale's mouth and slide down that slide or jump off the back tail, but they, they closed that off now. And they were repainting this thing while we were there, which kind of ruined our pictures, but uh, it was nice to see that it's being maintained and taken care of. How was it? And quick tip, stop at Ron's for some chili. It's oh so good, and they got a few locations. Welcome to Tulsa, a cool trendy town that really embraces their Route 66 roots. And you can't really miss the Golden Driller statue. It's a friggin' massive 76 foot tall statue of an oil man resting his arm on top of an actual real oil derrick. Built in 1966 at the time when Oklahoma was the oil capital of the world. This guy can withstand 200 mile per hour tornadoes. And kinda lame they had him decked out with some advertising while we were there. And make a stop at Buck Adams, it's really just a newer gift shop on Route 66 but it's really well done. 
They've got themselves a great muffler man and some good neon, and some of the best souvenirs you could buy on the route, in my opinion. And don't miss the metal gold sign just down the street, which has been beautifully restored. Then we got the Cyrus Avery Plaza. Mr. Cyrus Avery is often known as the father of Route 66. The sculpture is pretty damn cool. It's extremely detailed. There's even a juicy bug in the grill of his car. Now look, there's a lot of cool old restored gas stations on Route 66, but after a while, I think you're just gonna be saying to yourself, I've seen enough of these damn gas stations. On our way to Stroud, we hit some pretty gnarly rain, but don't worry, we still found the Rock Cafe. So the Rock Cafe is actually built of stones that were unearthed during the construction of Route 66. The Pixar guys stopped here and they took a lot of inspiration for Sally the Porsche from the Cars movie from the owner of the Rock Cafe, Don Welch. And the food here is actually really freaking good. Next up we got the Seba Station Motorcycle Museum, and even if you're not a huge motorcycle fan, I think you're gonna like this museum. It's actually really, really cool. And it's free in a restored 1921 gas station. They've got like 70 or so vintage motorcycles dating back as far as 1908. And don't miss the stone outhouse in the back with plumbing. You like that toilet, Dad? Fancy. Next we got one of my favorite sites, the Round Barn. It's a barn that's round. They said it couldn't be done, but in 1898, Mr. William H. O'Dare soaked lumber and then carefully, painstakingly, bent each piece in a rounded shape to construct the 60 by 40 foot round barn. And this thing takes a lot of upkeep and has been lovingly restored to what it is today, which is beautiful. Upstairs, there's a whole dance floor and the ceiling just looks awesome. And why make the barn round? Excellent question. Well, they figured it'd be more resistant to tornadoes, but there's really no evidence to support that. And also, apparently, it's a bit more efficient to work in a round barn. You can just go in one direction around and around to feed your animals. Next up, we got Pops. And they got themselves a 66-foot tall LED soda pop bottle out front, which is cool. Wasn't turned on when we were there, but still cool. Inside's nice. They got tons of soda. But here's the thing. It's kind of gimmicky. Felt a little sticky, a little dirty inside. If you're really into soda, the place to go is Galco's Soda Pop Shop in California on Route 66. We went, and it's better than Pops. It just is. But Pops is fun. If you're here, it's worth a stop. Heading into Oklahoma City, don't miss the Land Run Monument. It may sound kind of boring, but it's really freaking impressive. These sculptures are just massive, and there's so many of them, and they continue to add on new ones every year, so it's just getting bigger and bigger. But these sculptures are reenacting the land rush of 1889, which is basically when they opened up the state of Oklahoma to settlement. There were literally like 50,000 people lined up, and at high noon on April 22nd, they just ran and claim their land. But it really does just kind of gloss over the fact that it was Indian territory and they kind of just stole this land away from tribal members. And then we've got the wonderful Milk Bottle Grocery, which is only a 350 square foot grocery store, but was actually pretty successful. And in typical Route 66 fashion, they added that big old milk bottle to the top as an advertisement to attract some attention. Then we went for a little night cruise to check out some neon and the Yukon's best flower sign, which is really, really cool. The next morning started in the town of El Reno, where you can get an onion burger, which was born during the Great Depression when meat was scarce, so they beefed it up with some onions. But a happy accident occurred, the onions caramelized, made a oh-so-delicious crust on that burger, and you can still get these today, and you should, because they're damn good. I always love looking at the local markets and grocery stores when you're traveling. You can find some cool stuff. They have real cane sugar Dr. Pepper here. This is rare. <laughs> Hey look, another old gas station. And then we just stumbled upon this corn maze at P-Bar Farms. I had never done a corn maze before, so I was pretty excited. It's really cool. And this one was awesome and huge. Look at it. So we come in over here, and there's the beef. It's what's for dinner. Damn, we're gonna be here for 16 hours. It was fun for like the first 30 minutes, and then it just gets to be a little monotonous, and you don't know where the hell you are. We're in the corn maze. We're lost in the corn maze. There's no way out. But I'd never done one. Glad I did. It was fun. Woo! Yeah! 
Yeah! We're out! We're free! Yeah! And they also had this wicked fast slide. Wee! Woohoo! Yeah! This is it! So fun. And then down the road, we stopped at the Cherokee Trading Post, which is great in and of itself, but they have buffalo there, which is the best part of all. They had a mama, a papa, and a baby buffalo there, and these guys just stole my heart. I just wanted to hang out with them all day. Yeah, hi, buddy. Next up is the Oklahoma Route 66 Museum, and out front they have a fully restored 1940s Valentine Diner. These were small prefab diners made by the Valentine Manufacturing Company. They cost $5,000, and the owners would pay for their new diner by giving 10% of their daily gross income. And then inside the museum, they tell the story of the Mother Road decade by decade, which is kind of a cool way to do it. It's narrated by Michael Wallace, and they got some good tunes playing in there. This is actually one of the better museums on the route. And the next morning, it was another Route 66 Museum, the National Route 66 Museum, where they have... The largest Route 66 shield. But there's a few of these on the route, so I don't know how that's possible. But this is another fun museum where you can drive on the route and burn your thighs on a fireman's pole. And then we drove by another pedestrian tunnel. I love these things. Then we went to visit the Sand Hills Curiosity Shop in the town of Eric, but unfortunately it was closed. But still looks cool on the outside. But just down the street we found what locals like to call the Bone Break Hardware Museum. And you can't go in, you just gotta look through the windows. But the story is that the Bone Break family owned and ran this hardware store, but one day just closed the door and walked away in the 1960s and just left everything as it was. It's kinda creepy even. Well, that's it, people. That's Route 66 in Oklahoma. Pretty good state, huh? Lots of stuff in there. Hey, thanks for watching. Thanks for being here. And let me know if I miss any Route 66 spots in Oklahoma. Let me know in the comments below. And all the stuff in this video and more is available on that map, the Google map at visiting66.com. You don't want to miss that one. It's good stuff. And make sure you join us for the next video. We're heading into Texas. So go ahead and subscribe if you want to know when that video comes out. So thanks again for watching. I'll see you in the next state. Thanks.